Welcome back to Streamer Masterclass, a series on this channel where we go over anything and everything you might need in order to start streaming, or if you just want to improve your current stream. Today, we're talking about XLR mics, which is kind of ironic because this is a USB mic, which is why I brought my trusty SM7B for this video. Now, important disclaimer, this is a $400 microphone. You don't need a $400 microphone. There are plenty of cheaper microphones. For example, the Rode Pod mic is fantastic. The Wave DX by Elgato is also great. Let's move this so it's not in my face. I just happen to be working in a space with a lot of microphones handy. So I grabbed the industry standard, but please, don't overspend on a microphone. Anyway, in this video, we're gonna be going over the basics of setting up an XLR microphone and plugging it into an audio interface like this one. This is the Stream Deck Plus with the XLR dock. We'll go over properly setting up the mic gain so your voice is the right volume, setting up multiple input channels so you can control your gain volume separate from your teammate and your music volume, and even a couple more advanced features like a Twitch VOD track and submixes. So hit that like button to show the YouTube algorithm gods that you like videos like these. Subscribe if you haven't already, and let's just get started. While we switch cameras over here, I need to tell you that Streamer Masterclass is made possible by our sponsor, Own.Pro, where you have access to over 10,000 design elements that you can completely customize to create your own stream style. You can even customize the color of their pre-made overlays to match your branding. Setup is super fast and easy, where you can create a complete stream package in seconds with alerts, widgets, and labels added automatically. Upload your own assets, access their massive widget library, create elements from scratch. Own.Pro is an easy and fast way to get started streaming. Check them out at at the link in the description below. I'm gonna make this video extra simple because there are a lot of different XLR interfaces that you can use. So just because I'm using the Elgato one because it's one of the most common streamer <laughs> ecosystems to be a part of, you can still use the things I'm talking about in this video across most streaming XLR interfaces. And just to give you a list of some that have the features you'll need as a streamer, you've got the Elgato Wave XLR, the Beacon Studio, the Roland Bridgecast One, and those three are my favorites, by the way. I just posted the video last week comparing those three. So if you're looking for an interface, I'll link to that one in the description. You can also use the Go XLR with these features. And as of recently, I believe the Rodecaster Pro and Rodecaster Duo were just updated to add multiple channels for streamers. Super cool. That is a long list of a variety of devices. I will link to all those in the description below as well. But let's get started. I'm going to plug my SM7B into my XLR interface, plug the XLR interface into my PC, and let me show you what to do first. This is Elgato software right here that controls their XLR interface. The first thing that we need to do is tell Windows that this is our audio interface we want to use. It was a lot easier on Windows 10. You could just right click the speaker and go to sounds. Now you have to right click the speaker, go to sound settings, scroll down and click more settings because Windows is like that. So here we're going to scroll down, we're going to find our device, which for us is Wavelink, because that's the software that we're using. And we're going to find the one that says system. So if you're using Beacon, you look for Beacon Studio System. Or if you're using Roland, I think it says Bridgecast One System. Either way, your device, your system, you're going to right click on it, you're going to say set as default device. And then you're going to find voice chat as the second one and right click and make that default communication device. This means that by default, any new audio that your computer is playing is gonna play out of the system, except for communication apps like Discord or Skype will automatically go through the voice channel. We'll get into channels in just a second. The next thing you need to know is go into recording, find the microphone that you are using. In this case, we're using the Elgato system. And so I'm gonna find Elgato mic in, and I'm gonna save this as the default device and the default communication device. I'm not gonna do that here because I'm actually recording this on my beacon mic, which is why I have that one checked up here. But if you've done that, we're done in this window. Hopefully you never have to open that window again, but just fair warning, if you've plugged in a new monitor or anything into your PC and your audio breaks, that's probably what's broken. Go back into those settings and just reset those the way they were before. All right, now we're gonna jump back into our mixing software. This is where you're going to control everything. They're all gonna look a little different based on which system that you're using, but for the most part, they should have mainly the same features here. So up top here, we have all our separate channels which control our input sounds. You can see right now, I've got my two microphones that are right here. I've got my system sounds, which is the default that we set. So most of our stuff is gonna come through here. We've got our voice chat. So if I'm talking in Discord, my teammates come through here. I've got music set over here. If we wanted to add another one specifically for 
Google Chrome. We could add this in here and make maybe browser, add in browser and make sure we have Chrome routed through here. Something else we'll get to in a little bit. And now we can control YouTube video volume separately from everything else. I'm gonna remove that real quick because we don't need it. Down here we have our outputs and there are two main outputs. We have our monitor mix, that's what I hear. And then we have our stream mix and that's what our audience hears. These two outputs correspond to these two faders in each channel. So for example, if I go into voice chat over here and I turn down this slider above the headphones, that means I'm gonna hear my teammates in Discord less but my audience is still gonna hear them at full volume. For now, I'm just gonna link them together. So whatever I hear, my audience hears, that's the simplest way to do it. If I had my headphones plugged into my Elgato interface, I would go to the monitor mix, I would click on here and I would go to headphones, Elgato, Wave, XLR, and then I would hear whatever I have set for my monitor mix. Stream output is usually set to no additional output device because it's just sending directly into OBS inside your computer. You don't need to send it out to speakers anywhere. I have it set to something else because that's just how I'm recording this video. Don't worry too much about this. And that's the basics of how this all works. This controls the volumes of your inputs and this controls the volumes of your outputs. I'm gonna rearrange some things to make it look a little bit more default like yours and let's jump into setting up our microphone. So the first channel you're usually gonna have is the microphone built into your system. In this case, it's the Elgato Wave XLR dock or Elgato Wave XLR. The very first thing we need to do is set up our microphone gain properly. So here we have an SM7B and you can see when I talk, we've got this little leveling meter here that shows us the input gain that we're getting or the input volume. But you can see it's only going up about halfway up here. Now, every single microphone works differently. Condenser mics don't need as much gain as dynamic mics and even every dynamic mic is gonna need a little bit different amount of gain. So that's where we adjust right here. You can see as I turn this up, you can see the meter is getting higher and higher and higher until a point where it kind of stops. Doesn't matter what I do, it doesn't change. This is because a lot of newer interfaces have something called a limiter that stops it from going too far and peaking. But basically we want our voice in maybe a loud talking volume to start hitting the yellow here. That's what we're aiming for. So if I get a little bit loud, it's still not weird for me to talk this loud on stream if I'm getting intense. I'm not yelling, but it's getting in the yellow here. And that's good. I think our gain is set properly here. And just so you know, gain is something that once you set properly, for a microphone, you don't really touch again. If you find later on your stream that your voice is louder than your gain volume and you wanna turn yourself down, you don't do it in here, you do it in here. Okay, remember that. Down below the gain here is phantom power. Now phantom power is something you only need on a condenser microphone. So we are using a dynamic microphone, I'm gonna turn that off. Just so you know, a lot of people might tell you that phantom power will hurt your dynamic microphone. That's not true. It might add a little bit of hiss and static if your mic's not great. So turn it off if you have a dynamic mic, but it's not gonna do any damage. If for some reason you're a psycho and you bought a ribbon mic, which is so rare that they don't even put it in here, don't put phantom power on that, that will blow it up. And the last thing here is if you have your headphones plugged into your audio interface, do you want to hear your voice or not. This is done differently on different devices. A lot of them will have a mic monitoring fader that you can just control the volume of how much you hear your own microphone. But if you don't like to hear your voice back in your headsets on here, I'm gonna change this to PC at 100% and mic at 0%. Or if you wanna hear yourself, you can start turning this more and more towards the microphone. I actually really like to hear my own voice. So I'm gonna set this at 50-50 here. And that's it. Our microphone is now set up and ready to use. Let's start setting up everything else. Now, one of the things we wanna make sure we can do while we're streaming is adjust different sound sources or different inputs separately. So maybe I'm playing a game that's got a little bit of a lull and I want to turn up the music. I can reach up here to music and I can crank this up. And you can see in the software, the music is going up as I turn it up on this dial. But then maybe we get into a really intense moment and I need to be able to listen for footsteps. I can crank it right back down. So we're gonna set up multiple channels here. And we're gonna start with music because that's the most common one. So if I launch Spotify, I'm gonna turn on some stream beats here, which shameless plug is copyright free music for your live streams and your YouTube videos. We got 16 genres, over 1700 tracks, a ton of music, and it's completely free to use available on Spotify and Apple Music. So we're opening it here on Spotify, link down below. <laughs> but I'm gonna pull up one of my favorite tracks. I'm gonna pull up Ambient Gold. And you can see 
it's not coming through system here, or it's not coming through music over here. It's actually coming through system. And that's because we set system to be our default setting. I need to let Windows know that any sound that comes through Spotify needs to come through the music channel over here. So we do that by going into our sound settings. We're gonna scroll down and we're gonna go to volume mixer right here. We're gonna find Spotify. I don't know why it shows up twice. It's just a funny little Windows thing. We're gonna hit the down arrow and for output device, we're gonna check this and we're gonna go to Wavelink Music. And now, look at that. It probably got quieter because we have it turned down so low compared to system, but now we got music in our channel over here. And as I turn up and down the music dial, well, you probably hear it turning up and down in the mix here because I actually have it playing through the recording mix. And that's how it's gonna work for anything. So for example, if I launch Chrome here and I pull up a YouTube video, again, let's pull up the music video for Ambient Gold. You can see it's coming through system. I'm gonna add another channel called browser and under Google Chrome, I'm gonna make the output Wavelink browser. And now I've got a separate place to control my browser volume. And this will just be Google Chrome volume. Everything else like my game or a separate app is still gonna come through system. So now you can control all your sounds on your PC separately. Let's send the final mix over to OBS. All right, we've got OBS here. It's gonna be very simple. We're just gonna hit settings. We're gonna to go to audio. And then next to mic auxiliary audio, we're gonna click that and we're gonna set it to Wavelink stream. And that's gonna send our stream mix directly into OBS. And you can see, let's hit apply and okay. You can see as I'm talking, that's going up and down, meaning it's picking up my microphone. Lots of times I like to test if it's the proper microphone that it's not grabbing something else. I'll just tap on the microphone. And now you're all set. Anything that we mix up here is gonna come through in OBS and our audience is gonna hear it. Now, some of you are noticing that even though I'm talking into two microphones here, you're only hearing me once, or it only sounds like you're hearing me in one microphone. Why is that? Well, that's where we get into some of the nitty gritty of mixing, especially something called sub mixes. And this is really cool. Elgato kind of paved the way for here. And I'm kind of proud to say, if you don't mind me bragging a little bit, I actually helped them with this feature a little bit. So you can see at the bottom of each of these sliders, you have both your icons for your monitor mix and your audience mix, but some of them have them crossed out. So this is the microphone I'm talking into now. And this is the microphone over here, the SM7B. In fact, just to be easy, I'm going to name this one SM7B. Go ahead and put them next to each other for simplicity here. Now you can see that the audience mix of the SM7B is crossed out versus the audience mix of the Beacon. And that's what I'm recording. So the recording is gonna hear my Beacon microphone, but it's not gonna hear the SM7B. If I were to do this, now you're gonna hear the SM7B. And if I go back, you're gonna hear the Beacon mic again. You'll also notice that I have the headphones of both of them crossed out. This is crossed out by default, and you should, for the most part, always leave this off. And you might be saying, well, Harris, we talked about adding your microphone into your headphones. Yes, that's done in here. And there's a reason for that. If you turn this on, this is actually the sound from the complete mix. This means that if I turn this on right here and I was wearing headphones, this would be the sound from my mic traveling all the way to the PC and then traveling back to my headphones and there's converting going on there. There's some latency being added. Latency or lag is happening there. And I'm gonna hear my voice delayed in my ears. It's It's got almost like a little bit of an echo. It's not a way that you want to hear your own voice. If you want to hear your own voice, do it in this setting here in the monitoring settings. Having two different mixes, a mix that you hear and a mix that your audience hears are called sub mixes. Where that comes in handy is a situation like music here, where in general, if I'm playing a game, I like to have my music turned a little bit lower than my audience can hear it. Because for them, it's background music, it's entertainment, it's fun, but for me, I need to be able to hear the game a little bit more than they do. So I unlink the two. I adjust my sub mix that I'm hearing. You can see this is the monitor sub mix. I adjust mine a little bit lower, maybe 70% of what I have the audience mix on. And then I link them back together. That way, when I drag one, 
They both move. I can turn them up and down at the same time, but mine is locked at a lower volume than the audience is. Another really good example of this is when I used the Go XLR, for some reason, my teammates came through louder in my headset than they were sent to the stream. If I turned down my teammate volume so they sounded good to me, my audience would tell me they were too quiet and couldn't hear them. So if I turned it up so my audience could hear them, they were really loud in my headset, and the Go XLR at the time didn't have sub mixes. If I wanted to fix that now, I would just unlink voice chat, which is where discord comes in turn down the voice chat slider until it sounds like a good volume and then link them back together and now even if i turn down the discord volume on my stream deck over here you can see it controls them both because they're both linked together submixes are great they're super powerful and they're very simple to use the last thing you might need is a twitch vod track output and essentially what this is is it takes everything that you're mixing and it removes the music and it sends that to twitch that's something i'll show you how to do in a part two of this series where we'll go over setting up eq and compression voice effects as well as vod tracks more advanced audio features so if you want to see that one make sure you subscribe to the channel hit the like button while you're down there if you haven't yet and congratulations you're now an expert in mixing audio for your live streams. So if you want to see the advanced version of this, where we go over uh, VSTs, mic plugins, a VOD track output, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. Hit the like button while you're down there. And if you're still watching, throw your favorite emoji in the comments for engagement. Helps out a lot. Hope this helps you a lot. And as always, happy streaming.